Welcome to That Range Life, episode 38? 38. 38. 38 episodes. <sighs> Boy. Should we do something? Should we do something random up for the 40th like we did for the pod, podcast? <laughs> I, I think know. that was when we like celebrated an anniversary because, you know, we're like, whatever. Yeah, well, and I think at that point we thought we had a <laughs> shot at being done with this thing in the near future. So like, oh, we'll make 40 and then we had 35 right. more episodes. Right. <laughs> That's true. And really we just chose to be done. And frankly, <laughs> I, I'm hitting a point where I miss it. I kind of want it back. But... <laughs> I can't take that burden, in my, especially like I have such a just general bad attitude in life right now. So the last thing I need is to add that thing on top of it, especially during the election. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, episode 38, coming to you from a different location on my part. Chris is still home in Chicago. Anyway, let's get the business out of the way first here. Do us a favor. Down here, I want you to. Click subscribe if you're on Chris's YouTube page at Chris yeah. McEwen. I want you to like this and give me a comment. Just give me, we, we get them every now and then, but not often. And most of you watching this are our friends and family. Let's be honest. Come on, <laughs> help us out. Okay. Go follow Chris at, at Chris McEwen on Twitter, Instagram. If you can, that'd be great if you could follow at Range Heroes in the same places. We need the help, guys. That's what we do. We're a big internet. Golf media guys, all right. We're desperate for the likes, the follows, the clicks. It's how we. It's yeah. It nourishes us. Nourishes us. Feeds <laughs> us on the inside. Um, as you can tell, I am not in my usual location. Yeah, where are you? I am in Wisconsin at the uh, the in laws place where COVID is spiking. <laughs> so my parents are like. Over- I mean, that could be anywhere in this country, Bill. They put, I mean, they're firing up field hospitals. Yeah, I saw that. Saw that. It's, and then, of course, there's people like, oh, you don't need this. You're making a big deal out of this, which is even more concerning. And I'm going to tell you, boy, have I seen some political signs up here. Woo-wee. Yeah, you're in the thick of it. You're, that's pretty purple up there, isn't it? I'm in or, the middle of nowhere. Yeah, flip, okay, so it's not so much. a coin. Yeah, that's what you get. And you get it yeah. hard. And I have my own feelings about what I'm seeing up here. I will keep it to myself. Yeah. I will tell you, I got a text from my mother concerned about Wisconsin. Corona. She saw some article and it was a big 120 person golf outing that saw a big, oh, man, a big spread come out of it. I'm like, well, obviously they didn't handle it correctly. Yeah. And I go, Mom, rest assured, we haven't really gone anywhere. But the places we have, everyone's worn shockingly. Everyone's had a mask on, everyone working there. So the one place that I didn't even cross with the person had masks on. And I'm, uh, this place is notorious for it. We're in the middle of nowhere, dude. They don't follow the rules. They're like, yeah, but we're in the right. middle of nowhere. We don't need to follow right. the rules. They're all wearing masks. So nice. that's where we are so far. I'm leaving tomorrow as we're recording this. I'm leaving tomorrow. We'll see if we can keep it safe, healthy, surviving. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. I feel I feel so confused because you're standing and I'm sitting. Like yeah. We've really, you know, changed roles here. Although, you know, I feel great in this position right here. I feel like I'm relaxed. I'm comfortable. I could. I mean, how long do you want this show to go? I got all night. I know. I feel. I, I feel good, man. I feel like I'm getting interviewed. <laughs> like, well. You know, he came out of nowhere the first, and uh, hit the me first, in the back of the head with a with a lead pipe. I feel like in the first period we just really didn't get things going, and uh, <laughs> you know we we were playing a lot in our zone, and we were just flat on our feet. And uh, between first and second look, uh, coach gave us a had a few harsh words. We came out a little better, but then the third period, I feel like we just really came and got them. Um, <laughs> we were able to squeak a point out. You know what can I say? Kaner had a great game. <laughs> But yeah, that's what it feels like. But it's kind of nice standing up. I will tell you. For la- it I, is, right? I'm holding the <laughs> microphone with the stand. Such a professional outfit over there. Well, that's inspired by Paul Bissonette of former NHL fame, Arizona Coyotes, broadcast fame, and maybe most importantly, the Spit and Chicklets podcast from Barstool Sports. It's one of the best podcasts in the world. Um <laughs> he's out in Arizona while well, those guys are you know, all over the place too. And he just holds his, his Yeti mic or whatever he has yeah. with this thing on. So I'm like, it's one show. It's not <laughs> it's like good we're enough s- for him. It's good enough for you. Right. It's not like we're yeah. that serious. I mean, I, right. I, 
I wish I had a practical way. It looks like I got kind of a mean setup here, but I have my laptop up at eye level. Right. So I'm when I'm looking at you, it's not too bad, but it's on this little like window shelf with a ring light and webcam right here. I mean, guys, it's top notch. I got to tell you, though. So we've been up in Wisconsin now for a few days and I, I go, I have a bunch of things I need to take pictures of. They have hardwood floors here in space. All right. That's good for some of the things. I discovered <laughs> this one bedroom they have that you know, no one's staying in because the whole family's not here because of coronavirus and what have you is like the stu- the photo studio I've been yearning for in all my really? years of doing golf review products. I'm thinking, how can I recreate this thing at home? But <laughs> between the ring light, the lighting of the room, the furniture, the floors, I go, I said, let me name drop here. I sent Brandon Wallach of True Links where – some pictures of the room and the setup. And I'm like, I'm not kidding you, dude. Like I have a real deal photo studio going here. <laughs> I have to drive four hours now. Anytime I got to take pictures of like shoes, clothes, right. accessories, right. <laughs> Cl- right. clubs are still best outside. But <laughs> I mean, it's, it's unreal. Now, like, I'm not going to lie to you. Hey, we get down the road and get some better equipment. Even not, maybe I just have to f- think about this. I don't hate this setup for recording. This is good. This is great. It's, it's pretty nice. I mean, I'm I, like, I, I, I can see the reflection. A, I can see the reflection of the the light behind you, but that's all right. We'll work on that. Well, and if we do this during the, <laughs> if we did this during the day, wouldn't it be terrible? You'd see a lake behind me. That's true. And you probably see my father-in-law out there, like stretching or doing something, Just or working like, on something, looking through the window at you. <laughs> be doing like. <laughs> Um, it's kind of nice. Like you can't see because my ring light, like straight out here, man. There's a house across the way, and it's a. I mean, it's a tiny lake. It is. It's like, is this a Ferris Bueller lake house? It's been really? incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's where I'm at. I'm in, I'm in Wisconsin. No big deal. Cool, man. Drinking beer. Yeah. It's a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah. It's a Bourbon County 2016 barley wine. I'm going to really feel that if I finish it by the end of the show. And I got yeah. I got, I'm waking up for a, uh, 8.30 tea time at Lake Arrowhead Golf Club. Oh, are you? Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Very right nice. The, uh, the Sand Valley Satellite Course. Everybody who plays Sand Valley yeah. goes and rounds it out there. Yeah. Um, we got up here on a Saturday, looked at tea times. There was like one, one, two acceptable times Sunday morning, nothing on Monday. So I can't remember. Yeah, it was yes, like last evening. My father-in-law call, calls Lake Arrowhead, and they're like, we have one super early round on Monday. We have, like, two on Tuesday. And we're sitting here going, like, God, it's mid-October now. What, yeah. What's going on here? And the guy's like, yeah, it's the end of the year. Everyone's making the last push, and it's all the Sand Valley traffic making the last push. I was like, God. Yep. yep. No. Yep. So anyway, <laughs> finally get to see what Lake Arrowhead's all about. Oh, and they closed one of their courses. Yeah, uh, this mohawk is really getting going. It's true. Looks good, man. I like. I got like the wolf Stanson from uh, D two <laughs> haircut going. Like, when you look at it like this, not a uh, all, right. all right. What's we're, on the show? What are we got going sh- on today? Yeah, I forgot we do that on this show. I look. I'm all out of sorts here. Okay, take it easy. I'm remote. <laughs> you're um, remote. You haven't driven the show in a week. You're all. You're all out of whack. I'm on location. Right. <laughs> um, what do we got on the show? We got Gear Talk today. Gear Talk featuring one thing I'm going to spend time on today. That is a true yeah. Linkswear Lux Knit Shoe. I got a lot a to pretty. say about this. I might it's go a little, little off the review. Um, that's Gear Talk. We we have some we have some golf events, more so I think on your side from this past weekend, because I, I just sure. gave you the foreshadow of where my golf has gone this weekend. But I have some golf coming up. And uh, it's really about it. I'm sure we'll still find a way to squeak an hour out of the show, right? <laughs> Especially do we, want to, do we want to address Hoodie Gate? <laughs> Actually, yes, <laughs> I do want to address Hoodie Gate. Um, I do it. All right, great. And because it's very pertinent to some of the things I brought with me on this trip. So, uh, yeah, we'll get to Hoodie Gate. But first, let's, uh, let's dive into gear talk. Hey, did you notice between Gear Talk, the Gear Talk transition, all of a sudden now I got this? <laughs> curly Q and Wolf Stance yeah, would be upset. About curly it. Lock. Yeah. <laughs> it's still there. I'm just going to go with it. All right. Is that cool? Looks good, man. I so like it. 
I'm sitting here thinking because I've been I've I brought these shoes. These are the only shoes I brought to me. I brought with me to Wisconsin. Only shoes and flip flops. Which wow. let me talk. Let me talk about that before we dive into gear talk. I um, I kept hearing God, the weather's gonna be so good when you're up in Wisconsin. It's gonna be beautiful, and I never check. We get here the day of. It's nice. The next day, cold, windy, like fifty degrees, and miserable. I'm like oh, only pants I have are golf pants. I didn't even bring pants. <laughs> I had two pairs of shorts and a swimsuit for like. I, in our heads, we thought like we might go to this pool they have, and we're like, we're not going there. Yeah, that's so dumb. Um, and then the next day, I mean, it was like a hurricane all day. And then at like three o'clock, it broke and it was windy, but it was at least sunny and maybe like fifty-eight degrees. So okay. just not prepared. But I did bring this pair of shoes, and I'm like, I can wear them for golf and anything we go do. So so far, the true links wear Lux knit. God, I'm a lot of words to spit out on golf branding. Seriously. Um, I have worn these shoes now. We went hiking at this, I think it's Rocha Cree State Park, something like that. Okay. And there's like, uh, I mean, big trails up and down through the woods. And you usually can climb this. I can't, I'm not even pretend I know the number, but super tall, like rock thing that yeah, shot there's up. Some like yeah there's like some pretty big bluffs in your area that you can hike around and climb and stuff yeah like this is like a legit yeah. mountain yeah and mm-hmm. uh so you can take all the trails to that and then there's cool because there's like native american petroglyphs civil war petroglyphs like drawings and graffiti on these things from 200 years ago it's yeah it's interesting. Yeah, yeah yeah so for that i wore this sh- i wore it i wore this true links wear shoe all right really yeah wow has <laughs> didn't take a golfing I wore it to go hiking and it was perfect. Good in the sand, good in the, in the pine needles, the (laughs) dirt, but a fantastic hiking shoe. So comfortable. Oh my God. It's so comfortable. And then today we went to this like middle of nowhere, small family apple orchard. Same thing. Oh, and it was after the hurricane. So it's just muddy, disgusting, whatever. Well, you'd say it's a knit shoe. That can't be a good combination. Oh, contraire. The true links where Lux knit, waterproof. It's a knit that's shoe. Awesome. It's waterproof. That's so, awesome. So my son, as I watch him in his shoes and socks or whatever, just runs up to a giant puddle on a farm, you know, that's probably like yay deep. Yeah. Just jump straight into the thing. And I was like, maybe I should do it and test out the waterproof ability of this shoe. <laughs> I didn't. I thought better of it. <laughs> but I, I mean... Not even playing golf in this shoe. It's so comfortable, versatile, great traction in, uh, you know, the tougher terrain. I'm sure Josh Rivera would laugh at me. It's not some, like, super expensive, nice hiking, camping shoe that him and right. his right. wife do. I, mean, all right, I get it. I'm not a camper, okay? <laughs> but So, I'm like, before we even get to the golf course, this shoe's fantastic. Let's go to the golf course in it. Again, very lightweight. We've talked about... We we talked about the uh, OG feel on this, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. So you know that shoe, that like lightweight knit upper, and it fits like, yeah. I can't remember the call, like a sock fit kind of deal, but it is like yeah. that. I mean, it's just super natural, comfortable, free. You know, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like you don't Is that feel- one all one piece, like the other one? Yeah. Like the tongue is all, yeah, see, that's Same great. thing. You know, you, you like you don't feel like you're wearing a shoe. I'm not telling you I feel like I'm barefoot, but it's like you're not, you don't have a yeah. shoe on. Yeah. And so yeah. same thing like when you're golf and you go, oh, I'm not wearing a shoe. I'm not, I, I'm not going to have great stability in these. And then somehow you're making a golf swing and your feet aren't going anywhere. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's awesome. So uh, I've, ta- I've taken to wearing this shoe more. I, and I've, I think I've said this on every True Links Wear conversation we've had on the show. I wear this shoe more as a regular everyday shoe than I do a golf shoe. And I was, yeah. I was looking at my at my front door or where we keep our shoes by the door before I left to come here. I'm like, I got three pairs of true links wears by the door now. I don't even have <laughs> other shoes. Right. I mean, I do, but I like I don't wear other shoes anymore. Yeah. It's flip flops or one of my three pairs of true links wears. So I, I we'll see. I, I could prove a point. And go golfing in them tomorrow because I'm sure we're playing tomorrow. I'm sure it's going to be a swamp. 
I could prove a point that they're just fine, but I sort of feel like these are my these are my precious everyday shoes. Like they I don't, are kind of, yeah, they and they look great, man. I love the just that white straight line along the sole there. It's beautiful. Well, it's, let me get to that in a second. So this this knit yeah cleans like i'm just like well you know it's still gonna not, it's not gonna clean up great dude this thing cleans off and scrubs so well really I mean, they've got look at it. i mean they've gotten yeah. trashed the last two days you can't yeah. even tell now this is a thing this white foam part yeah usually on a golf shoe that has stuff like this and it's like a softer foam they get really brown and they stain right and then yep. as they are going like this while you're wearing them they start get cracking the creases and right? stuff yeah totally well buzzword here true links where uses this foam in the midsole called a wanderlux i'm assuming it's spelled w-a-n-d-e-r so it has to be wander not wonder wanderlux now the purpose of this it cleans real easy and it retains its shape so you don't get that creasing and that cracking everything oh, so it's man. more durable easy clean up you keep you keep the knit shoe looking fresh yeah they're fantastic i can't say enough about them yeah. and uh I don't. I don't tell them I'm saying this, but uh, I probably I wouldn't be surprised if I have more of them in my possession at some point. Do they, do they have other colors besides the black? Yes, actually, I'm glad you brought that up because my hand. I'm not sure if I remember. I do remember they have this gray. It's like gray, black, and white. Okay, so slick. It's awesome. Yeah, that's more. That's much more my style. Yeah, I love the black look, but I, you know, I I can't pull them off. Not oops. like you. I would go gray for sure. It's pretty well, and it's funny because I've been the same way. I'm not a like I can't pull off black shoes with shorts. Like that's my big thing, right? But right. these, like these, you can do it because they're not. Those super look like a pretty natural shoe, just in general. Right, right, yeah. So I, these go well, but uh, they, this gray is awesome. It's so good. And then they have like it's a it's a signature color scheme you see in True Links wear shoes. It's white with like a dash of a navy blue. mm Hmm. They have that too. Very I've good. Seen, yeah, I saw those. Yeah, those are those are nice. How I'm like, I'm trying to think though, what other <laughs> colorways? Like, if I would go, I this is the dream one I want. What would can it you be? get? Like, can you get a red and a black and a white? Sort of like the my colors. The, yeah, the Range Hero Shield. Yeah, I was I was thinking like, what could I? What would I have to do to get them? Like, hey, just make like a real off the wall color like this. Make like an right. all red one with hints of white and black. Yeah, it's impractical. They'll, at this point, though, like this right. brand, this brand's so hot, they'll sell. Yeah, and Ooh, actually, if, they, if they made a tie dye, I'd have to sign up for that. Maybe that's something we can do. Hmm. Maybe we need to get. I'm dying to buy a pair of tie dye shoes. I almost bought the pair of the what was it? The U.S. Open uh, the Nike ones. Yeah, but if 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 True Links wear. They went into it with the tie dye. Maybe we could get all white ones and tie dye them ourselves. I don't know, man. They're so. It seems like they're so impervious to water. They may just shed. All I'm on, the, I'm all on the this. Dye. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look into this. I think that's a nice. thing. Oh, and I'm wearing tie dye shirt. What do you know? Yeah, um, look at that. See. But yeah, I love this shoe. So I don't know what else to say about it. Go check out the review on DriveRangeHeroes.com. That's all I can say. You'll love them. The great shoes. <laughs> All right, that was gear talk. Hey, Chris, it was a real yes, good. Man. It was a real good gear talk. It was, it was a good gear talk. Pleasure. It was a pleasure. Hey, thanks for joining us for gear talk. Next segment, hoodie gate. Uh, hoodie gate applies to gear talk a little bit, but I saved it. Give um, an overview, real quick, of what hoodie gate is for those that aren't on Twitter. Well, let and, me. Uh, let, but, okay, sorry. Go ahead. Let me start you, with. You're running the show. I'm running. If I think we saw last week, there's a reason for it. Um, yeah, because when I run the show, our voices don't match our faces. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Down the hallway here in my new photo studio, my remote photo studio, I go, you know, I go off on like artistic explorative journeys on. Um, I brought two pieces of Sun Mountain outerwear with me, one of them being. A golf jacket, but it's a hooded golf jacket, which I think there's a difference because golf's stupid. There's a difference between Correct. where a hooded jacket's okay, but a hooded sweatshirt is unacceptable. Right. So let's go to Hoodie Gate. One of actually my favorite guys in golf. Like I think this guy's great, fresh breath of air, all that. Tyrell Hatton. He's the best. Did you see some of the mic'd up stuff with him? 
I, I mean, I, I actually the thought guy, it, it wasn't that, it wasn't even that good because of like, from the past, his mic yeah. ups get vicious. He has such an yeah. attitude. Like I love him, and so <laughs> he it was hates like, himself. He's just another self loathing golfer. It's right, amazing. And yeah. he was so like, uh, he was just so tame at Wentworth this week. But um, guy played. He played some excellent golf. He's been playing good golf all year because you know yep. the Euro guy pay attention to the Euro tour with <laughs> golf expert. And um, he like yeah he has been playing well all year, and uh, he broke out in Adidas hoodie. It's a sweatshirt, like it is a sweatshirt, but it's from their golf line. And oh my right. god, here's what killed yeah. me about it. It wasn't even like golf internet lost their mind negatively about it, but it was like all the golf media guys getting ahead of not losing their mind about it. Be like, people are gonna get so upset about this. It's to- it was to- totally. Water. It's totally true. That's such a great. That's, that's that's such a great observation. Everyone was was preemptively defending while hating golf. Hoodie Gate existed rules. before before Hoodie right. Gate existed. <laughs> right before it was a thing. Oh, that's so great. You're and so right about that. The guy, I saw one guy's post or something along the lines of like he was this guy wearing a hoodie is about to win, and he's like, you know, I think like if this was at my course, uh, how like how many complaints and written documented complaints I'd have from my members about how this is unacceptable as they all go show, you know, go out and shoot 25 over. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I and, had guys on my timeline saying like, I'll wear jeans, but a hoodie is out of the question. Like not a chance. Like, come on, man. Like. Well, there's such, a, there's such like I, I admit I as a guy like I think there's a time and place. Go ahead, go out on the golf course in your shorts and t-shirt, depending on the place. Should you go out to Chicago Golf Club in shorts and a t-shirt? No, of course not. No one's saying that. But, but I if mean, it's Friday afternoon at Elgin, Elgin Country Club, who's got a more laid back vibe or Kishwaukee National, it, maybe it's fine. Like it's a different culture, right? I get it. It's fine. I'm good with it. Ninety five percent of golf courses, it should be absolutely fine. Right. And the or, other five percent, you're not going to get on anyways, so don't worry about it. Right, right. But especially if it's like, a, even if you made it like a hey, weekdays after after twelve p.m. Wear whatever you want. Have a good time. Like yeah. this is a different culture. But golf boom, we can't do things that are fun now. We can't I, take. Honest to God, of that. I mean, yeah, it's a perfect example of how golf. Just you've talked about it before. Like golf isn't going to get out of its own way with this stuff, man. Well, you know how many people so who are on, how many people who are on the fence, and I think like Michelle Wee when the LPGA came out with their dress code, and she's just like, here are all these outfits I wear that like bring pe- bring young girls to golf. She's like, oh, I can actually dress kind of fun, and there's a style yeah. to it. Yeah, and she's like, I'm a, do I look like a hoe bag wearing this? No, but right. now under the new rules, I can't wear it. And I think like I think of that, and I, I mean it's true. The people who are on those like those border players who go, yeah, I would play, but it's just such a stuck up vibe and so stuck. Right. right. Now you see this guy go win. I mean, that's a big purse at Wentworth too, but like win a big tournament wearing hoodies all weekend. You go, oh, you know, it's not so bad. Maybe I can, I could do that. I could live right. like that. Right. And it's an Adidas golf hoodie. The thing's probably 80 bucks. It's not like he's rolling out of bed in some bullshit Walmart sweatshirt with, you know, whatever. Right. It's like, dude, this is like, so I think what, um, well, it was the, my buddy that's from Adidas um, who said, stop calling it a hoodie. It's a golf performance shirt that happens to have a hood. Like it's made for golf. It's you, know, like, you know what I'd say to that guy? Stop calling it what it isn't. It's a hoodie. And that's what, fine. I mean, and that's fine. That should be fine. That's it, fine. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. That you're totally right. It should be fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And I would even I would even say before noon, it's fine. Wherever the hell you want. If you're well, paying but, 60 bucks for a tea time, where who cares? Here's Just what I would say. There's, and a don't far, be a jerk. there's a far cry between and I, I would be okay seeing somewhere in this. My Muni Kids tie-dye shirt, right? And yeah. like basketball shorts and like golf pants in the adidas hoodie it's not like what's the difference right. so what at uh, the sun Mount, this new sun mountain coulter hoodie or uh hooded jacket i have awesome once i zip it up it's a hoodie right. Look, so this <laughs> thing's a hoodie just right. as, a, as a jacket right. have a zipper it's ins- it's just the most ridiculous thing and i just wish we would stop let's just all 
just wear what you want to wear. Okay. And if there, it, this, this is, it's so simple to be just like there, you know, the fundamental aspects of golf are, you know, just don't be a jag, don't be slow and everyone's going to be happy. That's it, man. That's all it takes. Wear whatever you want. Right. Well, that's it. I get traditions, whatever, and classiness, but like, ooh, it's a hoodie. It's not like he was wearing cut off sleeves. Think, I it's, just, you know. Yeah, my point oh, here, is. Here, no, I want to go to that. Cut off sleeves. You remember when Payne Stewart won the 1999 US that's Open at right. Pinehurst and he cut sleeves off of a rain jacket? Oh, that's it's right. Same. Like, it's a, it's a butchered cut off whatever. 100%. 100%. I bet you there was no hem yeah. on those sleeves. Right. <laughs> I'm sure there was. Those things. I mean, those things were friggin' memorialized. They they framed them and hung them up in the pro shop. Right. At Pinehurst. Right. It was just pain being pain. That's it's fine. Cool, man. It was it's fine. Cool, then. Anyways, I, my point is let's not let's not define if you're an appropriate golfer or a golfer by the clothes that you wear. You know, it has best. nothing to do with it. All you golf elitist. Yeah, that guy's wearing a hoodie and would have beat the living shit out of you right. on the right. golf course. So, but hey, at least you were. Yeah, you looked. You looked whatever the part is for a golfer. It's so ridiculous. Sick pleated khakis and quarter zips, bro. Yeah, hoodie right. boy just beat you by twenty seven strokes with your handicap. <laughs> God, I hate. Golf. I hate it so much. Sometimes we're just such a. It's yeah, it's aggravating. It's aggravating. Anyways. Hey, by the way, tell old buddy, like, hey, look, we need to get on Chris McEwen.com and DryRangeHeroes.com some Adidas stuff flowing. Let's go. Let's get I can that work with him on that. He let's may get, do it. He, yeah. Let's get that hoodie in and start making some content. Yeah. Which, by the way, we got some you and I got some content coming up. We got stuff. We got stuff. Man. And I just did the math on this. If everything comes together, like we've been talking about, ho- yeah, you have to do some video making, but holy shit, do I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> well, yeah, I think both of us will have an equal amount of uh, no, no, of time no, I to will, do some stuff. I will explain to you how it was a great idea once I, while I was putting it all together, and then when <laughs> I started thinking it out, going, oh my god. Okay, that is what it is. Thank right. God it's the winter and golf is slow. Right. God, what am I going to write about all winter, dude? Well, I mean, you got. Well, I don't know because you write. You don't really write about like PGA events because I'll say you've got you're, you have the you have the Masters coming up in a in a month, and I'll be like, right. hey. So well, I played golf well, where Horton Smith, the guy who got like total canceled in golf. I I golf at his course sometimes. See, that's a post. That's yeah, a I'm thing. sure you're gonna. There's gonna be all kinds of releases. Everyone's going to be releasing stuff. So you'll have plenty of crap. Yeah, but I won't get in my hands till like February, March. <laughs> start start putting those feelers out now, man. Yeah, I'd be like, look, you don't even do know. You need, do you need help? Do you need me to counsel you and, and, and help you learn how to write for a website? Mm-hmm. I do, actually. <laughs> well, then you're, you've got problems. Yeah, I was going to say, I know your background in it. So yeah, I need help you can offer me. That'd be great. Except don't – I make jokes. I might go – there will be a point where I'm like, yo – you're not getting out making anything right now other than origin stories. So, hey, why don't you, why don't you put some fingers to the keys and help me out yeah, with right. content, bro? <laughs> Call it your off season. You won't even – yeah, you'll be like, hey, someone's going to show up at your house. I need you to write about a thousand words on it. Thanks, oh, man. No, Take it's some not. Pictures too. It's going to be, hey, just pick a topic and write a blog and I'll just say good enough and post it. How about that? Oh, shit. I can do that. That's all I need. <laughs> Careful what you wish for, sweetheart. <laughs> <sighs> Dude, hey, I played golf with a guy who shot a 68. On a Sunday, our neighborhood golf pro's son, right? Yeah, dude, the guy's a stick. He's such a stick. But you know, like he played college golf, and uh, he—it's just fun to watch. Like, and our our friendly neighborhood golf pro shot a probably he probably shot par, if not. I mean, he was he was keeping up with them shot for shot for a while because they had their own little match going. But um, yeah, dude, that's fun. Yeah, I haven't played with anybody like that well, ever. It's the old that right. When you play with someone like that, where you go, well, it's pretty easy. It's a drive. It's an approach, and maybe two putts, right? Yeah. But when you watch someone like that, you're like, no, but it's not a drive, and it's not an approach. It's, and it's yeah. not a putt. I right. I don't know what else well, to tell you. The biggest thing I I felt I felt like with him just watching a play, like obviously he was hit. He he hit 
14 fairways or whatever, 12, 13 fairways. Like oh, by the sounds of, Oh, I got my driver back. So are you. Yeah. Hey, I tell you something, mister. Just wait, just wait. I had some drivers uh, into the woods across the street, by the way. Did you? Nice. <laughs> nice. No idea where they went. My driver, my driver is back. I'm, I'm officially stating it right now on the show. Episode 38 market. You know, the next time we play together, you're going to hit it terrible. And I'm going to be like, oh, I guess we know who your black cloud is, bro. <laughs> I feel pretty good, though. I have to say it was a fun. Anyways, talk back to back, back to our back our, to our, the our neighborhood. Pro yeah, yeah. Right. Um, the, the number of 10 footers, 10 to 15 footer foot putts that he made for birdie. I mean, that's it right there. I mean, he had he had three birdies on the front. Every Ooh. single one was a one putt from 12 to 15. Is feet. this the guy? who's in at that private course that you yes. and I, it was yeah. so knowing that like this place was yeah. probably a very difficult for him because he's so used to that pristine. No, it's, he, he plays this course far more than that one. Really? Okay. He, yeah. He prefers this one. Cause he, yeah, he gets to play with his dad. Well, and, then he, so like, he, he has he, enough inside knowledge to go, oh, all right, this isn't going to be like 100%. a 14 on the stimp. No, hundred percent. He knows that the two of them obviously know that course, you know, front to back. They know every contour pretty much on every green and, they, you know, he's been playing that course since he was, you know, 10, probably. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was, you know, he worked on the course, so it's, you know, it's comfortable, comfortable for him. And yeah, he just, he cruised through. It's just like the, the, I asked him at one point, like, are you bored, man? Like, do you, <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's, it's just like rolling through the 68. It was fun to watch. It was fun. And it, it kind of like, not that it made me like, uh, I don't think concentrate any more necessarily, but like, I don't know. You, you kind of, you, you're a little inspired. Or you're not, it, dude, Cause you're not, you're like, not like in the swirl of the circus. Right. Right. Yeah. Like it's guys, like even if they're t- not taking it serious, they're not taking it serious is a lot different than our not taking it serious. It's like, yeah, for sure. It's and true. I, I think of like the big thing that sums it up is when you play with a guy like that. Like I remember when I was in my quote unquote, in my prime playing with my, at the time, and I can't even know how old he is now, but he's older, but 72 year old uncle mm-hmm. who, I mean, I can out drive. I was out driving by a hundred yards every time I, uh, every driver. And, mm-hmm. but like every club, this guy hit just sounded different. Even if like, not just cause it was slower, but like everything time different, you just hit the ball different. And yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. that's the difference here. It's like everything about your golf is just different than mine <laughs> right. it's just that's right. it it's different right yeah and i bet you, you get yeah. the same thing except these guys like are younger and swinging it i bet you you're like oh i've never other than going to a pga event live i've never heard a club sound like this before right right you know yeah. now i kind of hate them middle of the face every time what was also nice is that um they were always you know in the fairway off the tee right. so if we did have to look for a ball like my playing partner, who was not as accurate off the tee as the, the rest of us, like they would just go and immediately go and look for his ball, and it kind of made pace of play better too. Well, imagine that, right? Yeah. So it was pretty nice, but it was a fun round. You know, great golf course. Love that place. Those guys are awesome. Is that yeah. where you played this weekend? Like I've lost track of time. Yeah, that's where I was, was that on Sunday. F- oh, that Sunday. Friday, I played with our old pal. Adam unfiltered. Mm-hmm. We played uh, Coyote Run on Friday. Mm-hmm. That was that's a really good. Have you played Coyote Run? I've never played it somehow. It's really it's a pretty fun golf course. Rockport, right? No, Flossmore. Flossmore. Yeah, that's probably why I've never played it. If I'm going down yeah. that way, <clears throat> right? But it's 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 worth the it's worth the trek for you. I think, anyways. I don't know. It's probably forty minutes, whatever. But um, in great shape, and it eases you into the round. It's one of those golf courses where you don't necessarily have to hit driver for a while, um, unless you want to really take on take on the hole. Doesn't it get really long? It does. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's what I mean. Like it kind of just eases you in, and then once you get probably hole five, six, and then into the back, you can start playing driver. I mean, you can play driver whenever you want, but you don't need to, right? So, like, you can go. I went five iron off the tee on one, uh, five iron off two. Three is a par three, and then I think that's when you hit your first like par five, and you can start to kind of 
get into a little bit, but I'm going to go, yeah. I'm going to go way, way off base here. And I would like to come back to Adam unfiltered portion of this. Okay. And here's your talk. Like it started last topic and our back and forth. And then this topic. And I'm like, God, I, you really have to know what the, like really have an idea of like what the purpose of our stupid YouTube show is <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, this is like, I'm watching this as a relatable golf show. Like, no, you're, you're, what you're watching is a golf conversation amongst friends. Right. And right. if you like Crack a beer <laughs> and sit down and just hang out a little bit. And unfortunately this show, I feel like has not been too dynamic in terms of, uh, I, our best shows are when we're just sitting there fighting for 50 minutes about the dumb things. <laughs> but, uh, like I'm thinking, you know, I have different spectators in the house, so to speak. And I'm like, if I'm, I'm like my mother-in-law upstairs right now, she would be watch this. She'd be like, I, I don't care about any of this. I'm like, no, no one does. <laughs> That's the point. Right. That's Only, the point. There's a, yeah, it's a very niche market. Yeah, it really is. About any of this. But like, here's the way I work with the content I like to watch on the internet of any topic. Like, that's what I like to listen to. Like this I, is it. I'd right. rather hear like three three buddies engage, and that's why I kind of like spitting chicklets. Of course, it helps they have killer hockey guests, but like, yeah, it's really just like three or four buddies busting each other's balls and being like, "Oh, you're normal people who look at things in a normal way." Okay, cool, right? What a dumb show we have. <laughs> anyway, Adam unfiltered. Yeah, tell me yeah. about what what just, what. What about Adam Unfiltered? It's a good guy, man. Good guy. I love golf. He's a Adam good guy. Unfiltered. I know, man. There was a, a good guy. I think I said after me and him played, him and me, whatever. I'm not an English professor. Lay off me. He, uh, <laughs> when it was the 11th hole and he's like walking up ahead of me, I go, Adam Unfiltered, I'm not going to lie, man. I like playing golf with you. I think this works. And he's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> it's good. It's the right vibe. I hate, well, it makes I feel me like, happy. There's one thing I've given. Well, hey, take it easy. You're not going steady yet. Um, if there's one thing I feel like I've given off on the show, it's like I just wanted the right vibe, like just good time, easy vibe. Yeah, yeah. And he he fit in like that. That's not to say every vibe clicks. Like, and that's fine. We maybe two people sure. don't have the same. Vibe. You want a different vibe than I want, and our vibe. I felt like our vibes clicked. I'm just saying. Yeah, man. Eat your heart out, Adam Unfiltered. Um, <laughs> or Chris McEwen, whatever. You get you get the point. This is kind of nice, by the way, being able to wave the mic like an accessory. <laughs> it's like a yeah. I was gonna say it's like a, an additional appendage, but I didn't want to. Got a lot of weight going though, too. You do, man. Putting in the putting in the work. Lord knows I could use it. Uh, so Adam Unfiltered, tell me that was a good round. How'd you play there? Uh, I played pretty well. Remember that was when I first told you that the driver was back and you denied me and you said it takes two rounds. I said, no, I said two (laughs) weeks, not two rounds. Oh, I thought you said two rounds. I mean, don't go, uh, you can, no one wants to watch you go through your phone (laughs) anyways, but that's two. Okay. Whatever. I will give you credit though. I told you, Mike, you still have to survive the whole winter with it. And you went, Whoa. Yeah. I never said this would have to survive the winter. (laughs) I can't commit to that at all. So a little bit. Yeah, anyways, it was a good round. It was a lot of fun. We played um the thing that's really fun about Adam too is that well part of the vibe thing, I think, and the same thing with the guys I played with that um on Sunday was that uh we're just gonna we're gonna get through a round. We're not, you know, there's we're playing ready golf. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see it and hit it, and we're not gonna take forever over the ball or any of that crap. Like just let's go, you know. Right. And because uh, no matter what, we're gonna shoot 80 something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not gonna matter. We're gonna shoot you know, anywhere can... from seventy nine to one hundred and twelve. Right, right. Speaking so. of shooting one hundred and twelve, I am playing. Recording this on Monday, I am playing golf. I'm making the the suspenseful return to Oak Park Country Club on Thursday. Ooh. I went from yeah. like, I just want to play good golf. I'm like, oh my God, last time I played there, I, I think I was like, I'm genuinely worried about breaking 100. <laughs> Have you played? Um, we're, now we're really into it now, but uh, for those that are watching the show, like these guys are all over the place. Have you played Skokie? No, I saw he Adam on filters playing there tomorrow and I got pretty jealous. He's not, 
is he, did he get rescheduled? He was going to play there today. I got the invite for today and I couldn't make it. Oh, so I'm hoping, I'm maybe, hoping the maybe, rain got rained out. That could be the, the, I'm I, like I, I said, I've lost track of time. Invite. I may have, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm impressed though. You guys were on the same. Was he invited and invited you? I don't know how that worked because no, I wasn't, I wasn't aware that he was invited, but it's a common pal of ours. And I don't know if we both got invited or if he was well, the why, second pick. Why can't or, I can't. I want to be common pals with this person. <laughs> we'll work on that. You do want to be common pals for a lot of reasons because he's a good dude. One, but now I feel like I'm suspect of all this. I don't trust any of you. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I don't even understand. I don't know how to respond to that. Good. That's exactly where I want you to be on this. <laughs> that's, how I keep, that's how I keep you under control, Chris McEwen. <laughs> um, one last thing I want to add. I, I talk about this place I'm in right now. I'm, yeah. I, I, I have videos for it, but I can't quite think of the content piece for it. Uh, God, this thing's really getting like a little, yeah. Leave it right here. Um. <laughs> So I've discovered I, a long a couple of months ago. I brought up like, I mean, I just you maybe you can't relate to this given your living setup, but I mean, I just have like boxes upon boxes of junk golf balls, like recovered golf balls, whatever. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I brought a giant one of them. Oh, I won't lie, it was sort of like certain bit of can I just get it out of my garage? Right. Uh, I brought a whole box of them up here in Wisconsin and kept put them in the garage. And I brought up like. A hitting mat, a small one. It's actually, you know, it's got like the it's thick got the rough and the and a tight lie and a T or something like, like that. A spongy one where you can stick yeah. a T into it. Right. So right. it's one of those. It's actually a real nice version of the like easy fold out one. And then I brought up my Chippo set that's nice. up here, which apparently gets used without me and then it couldn't make me happier. And I even brought like a huge foldable hitting net, like a big real deal one too. But, and I sent you a, a picture, what yeah. I like to do is pop open the garage, drop the mat down, and just take little like 60% wedge shots over the road into the woods. Right. right. <laughs> so. Uh, it's kind of awesome. It is. And I feel like worst case scenario, if someone ever gets bent out of shape about it, I'm like, all right, fine. Let me put on some long pants on, uh, you know, long sleeves. Some right. boots, and I'll just go find all the golf balls for the next right. 400 yards in this thing. That's time well spent. Maybe I get a tail. Like I took, I went out, took the dog out before I hopped on the show here, and uh, there's some noises I'm, I'm concerned about. <laughs> I, I'm not telling you traipsing through the woods is the best thing here, but God knows who you know. Hey, <laughs> all the ATV uh, off road oh, guys yeah. cruising around out there too. <sighs> Look, I'm not your type. All right, just I don't belong. I know it. I'm just looking for old golf balls so I don't get in trouble with like the EPA or something. Right. Did you see this video going around? By the way, speaking of things in the woods, of the guy for six minutes being stalked by and like, uh, like aggressed at by a cougar. No. Oh God, I'll send it to you. It's terrifying. He was she was she from like Lincoln Park? Hey, or... oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> so the guy went for a run. And he okay. thinks he sees two bobcats on the trail, whips out his phone, starts recording video, and they're just scampering about. And is at this time, one starts like kind of coming at them, so getting close. They're not bobcats. They're baby cougars. Oh, man. Mom comes out on the trail. <laughs> Six minutes of the dude just walking backwards and like talking at the thing and yelling really? at it, making noises. And this thing like would like kind of like pounce at him and back off. And just follows him. He's walking backwards six minutes. And finally at like 630 of the video, picks up a rock and throws it at the thing. And it takes off terrified, which I, I mean, the whole time I'm like, why aren't you picking up a rock and throwing it at him? Like, well, <laughs> it's easy to say when you're sitting in inside right. a house and watching a video on your cell phone. When right. old buddy's, <laughs> old buddy's <laughs> like six feet away from a cougar. And when this thing like does his little like pounce things. I've never seen any more terrifying. That's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of the best comments I saw a guy was like, initiate shit leaving body now. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's pretty dead on. 
<laughs> All right. I think that's a good note to end it on. Um, yeah, I think that means a lot of stuff to talk about. If you, if I don't text you and tell you I'm home, tell someone to come up. Uh, you just say the lake house in, All right. in the seat. I don't know what the, in the seat in Akusa. Who knows? And <laughs> work in the woods. See where he is. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Chris. It's been a pleasure. I will talk to you soon, bud. See you, man. Bye, everyone. Bye.